Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Thangminlal Donghel. I'm the current vice president of Kuki Students Organization, Delhi NNCR, vice president administration. Well, on behalf of the Kuki Students Organization, Delhi NNCR, we would like to welcome each one of you for taking your time out despite your heavy schedule to come here for this very, very pertinent press conference against Meite's academic side. Well, we will go into details later on what does academic side mean. Meanwhile, I'd like to highlight our proceedings for today. We'll have the welcome address by L.S. Hang Singh, Vice President, External, Koki Students Organization, Delhi NNCR. And he will also be taking up the facilitation uh, program of our esteemed panelists. Then we will have the keynote address from Thangmin Lal Dongel, Vice President, Administration, KSO, Delhi NNCR. And for this very pertinent topic to be discussed today, to be addressed today, we have eminent panelists. And let me take the honor to highlight each of the panelists. First, we have Pauza Kup Guite. He is the president of Koki Students Organization, Delhi and NCR. Thank you. Second, we have Dr. T.S. Haukip who is the president of World Kuki Joe Intellectual Council, Dr. T.S. Haukip. And third, we have Selin Mang Haukip. He is the current general secretary of Kuki Students Organization, Delhi and NCR. <laughs> then, last but not the least, we have Mr. Visvazit, who is an advocate. He's still on the way. Nevertheless, can we have a round of applause for all the panelists for today? <laughs> that will be followed by a word of thanks from Neku Kim Vaipei, who is the area representative, Munirka. Friends, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge uh, one of our special invitee, none other than our dear major retired Amit Bansal, sir, if you would if you don't mind, would you like, would you be on your feet? We'd like to acknowledge your presence here today. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, for coming over, even as, as an observant observer. And also, we would like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Tara. Dr. Tara, please. Very outspoken, very outspoken lady who has stood with us the Cookie Students Organization in both good times and bad times. Thank you, ma'am, for your presence. You, can, you may take a seat. We also have our, our, our esteemed advisors, right? Cookie Students Organization is nothing without the advisors. Can we have our, our advisors who are present here today to be on your feet, please? Yeah, thank you so much. Dr. El Guite and Pool El Millian Haukip. Thank you for your presence. Well, to begin with, um, may I now invite L.S. Hang Singh, Vice President External, for the welcome address and felicitation. Good afternoon, all. I, on behalf of the organization, would like to welcome you all on this special press conference against the Meitei Academy no site. We are delighted to have you all as we gather to share the gross and systematic academic injustice meted out by the government of Manipur. Today's press conference is rather an opportunity for us to provide insight, details and engage in meaningful dialogue and also, we also appreciate uh, friends, 
from media and near and dear ones because your role is pivotal in communicating information to the public and without further ado uh, without further delay uh, i would like to take this opportunity to felicitate our esteemed panelists of the day uh, for this i would request our advisor Pu uh, boylin uh, if you could kindly um, acknowledge our esteemed panelists First, um, our esteemed panelists would be Dr. Uh, T.S. Haukip, the founding president of World Cookie Zoo Intellectual Council. Uh, sir, if you could kindly please stand on your feet. Uh, <laughs> And, and our next esteemed panelist would be Mr. Pauzekop Guite, the President KSOD. And our uh, General Secretary, Mr. Selin Wang. Mm, okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Pu Boylin. Uh, you may kindly proceed. And uh, we also have um, Pu Major Retired Amit Bansal. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for being here. And I would request our uh, advisor also uh, to please uh, felicitate him. Uh, yes, El Esguite. El Esguite. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, Pooh Advisor. Uh, and thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Before. <laughs> Before concluding, I encourage each of you to ask, seek clarification and engage in constructive discourse. Your inquiries will be valued and we are here to address them to the best of our ability. Once again, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to a fruitful exchange of information and collaboration as we navigate through the session. Thank you so much. Before I begin my keynote address, I'd like to also acknowledge, we would like to acknowledge friends from KQED. I'm not very sure of the uh, abbreviation. Uh, National Public Radio, right? One is Beth Labero, Labero, photographer. And another one, I'm not very sure of the name, but can we give them a round of applause, please? Lakshmi Sara. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for coming over. Is there any media house by chance? Okay. Well, before I begin, one more thing, one more concern that I'd like to address. Many of you are here today might be asking this question. Why this place such as Kramra Pay Space? Why would a press conference be held here? Actually, we we had to uh, we had to do it or organize it here because most of the time the amount of the amount of resources that we spend as a student organization in booking those places you know it becomes uh, it is not um, what is it the takeaway is too small you know the fact that nowadays media house have failed to realize their roles and responsibilities you know, it becomes very challenging for people, minorities like us, who wants to let their voice be heard across the world, you know, to capture the attention of the media houses. So what we thought is that no matter the place, no matter the space, in this world of ICT, you know, 
IC to ITC, I'm not very sure. ICT, right? ICT. Information communication technology. We thought anywhere, you know, we can utilize the resources that we have and then let the world know about our grievances. That is the reason why we thought this space or this place is the most appropriate place. So please don't misunderstand us. And in fact, if today the press conference works out well, turns out well, we will continue to organize or hold our uh, press conference here in this place only. Okay, coming to the keynote address. Well, friends, once again, a very, very pleasant afternoon to all of you. I stand here before you today with a heavy heart to address a matter of profound significance and urgency. That is the ethnic violence that has plagued Manipur between the Kukis and Maitis, Maitis communities, which have spiraled out of proportion, where the minority, that is the Kuki, Joe or Kukis, have to bear, bear the brunt of the state to their disadvantage. It is imperative that we recognize the human toll to this conflict. Today we have more than 365 churches raised to the ground. We have 200 plus civilians death. We have 7,000 households burned down. We have um, more than 300 villages raised to the ground, if I'm not mistaken. And there are more than 100 plus educational institutions which bear the brunt of this violence, the atrocities meted out by the Meitei communities. Families torn apart, in addition to that, livelihoods destroyed and communities fractured. Religious and educational institutions becoming a soft target only with the intention to paint religious animosity and to throttle, I repeat, to throttle the educational future of the cookies through perpetual suppression and to instill a fair psychosis so that they, that is the cookies, will never rise from the ashes. But I tell you, the cookies who are two true patriots of this country will rise like the phoenix and resurrect from the ashes and prove to the world how resilient we are as a community and so to them how nationalist we are. Today, the title of the press conference is aptly titled Academinocide. Well, I'd like to define or make all of us understand what academinocide and why is it justified to call it academinocide. Academi academinocide is a term used to describe the deliberate destruction, suppression or undermining of academic institutions, education systems or intellectual pursuits. It encompasses action taken by governments, authority, authoritarian regimes, or other powerful entities to suppress academic freedom, intellectual inquiry, and the dissemination of knowledge. Academinocide can take various forms, including censorship of academic materials, which we have found, uh, uh, which, we, were, which we, we have witnessed in Manipur, few years back when the government had to censor any book that is to be published from the state, if you, re if you recall. Persecution of intellectuals, closure of universities, now closure of universities, I have highlighted more than 100, and 100, 100 plus education institutions raised to the ground, right? And many edu more education institutions used as refugee camps today or let's say inter, where, inter, uh, relief camps, not refugee camps, relief camps today. All of these highlights and points to the fact that it is a the deliberate attempt of the state machinery to silence or otherwise to nib in the butt the educational future freedom 
and prospects of the Kuki minority in Manipur. The concept of academicide underscores the importance of safeguarding academic freedom and the autonomy of educational institution as fundamental principles of democracy and intellectual progress. It serves as a reminder of the dangers posed by efforts to stifle intellectual dissent and control the flow of information and the profound impact such, such actions can have on society's ability to, to advance and understand. Now, there are a few instances where there is deliberate attempt of the state which is against the violation of the Indian constitution. So, I will highlight which are the articles when the state uh, intentionally tries to suppress the education of the minorities and their education. Article 16 talks about equality of opportunity in matters of public employment which will be highlighted by the General Secretary later, but you, you very profoundly can understand how the recruitment process that is taking place today, where many cookie Joe cookies, their uh, prospects are cut short because they are not selected in the exams just because they belong to cookies. There are 13 students who are made to fail. We have a glaring example of a student, a lady student, who is the topper in university and was made to fail in the exam. And how the entire system uh, collaborates or are heading globes to make, to, to make sure that the cookies and their education are suppressed. We have examples of our students and the documents being burned down in universities, in the heart of university, in the heart of Imphal. We have our professors' offices being attacked, being raised to the ground. If these are not glaring examples that, that, does, that, 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 that did not provoke you, I remind you today, friends, as an intellectual, as somebody who is educated, we must speak out because these are nothing but against going against the provision of the constitution number one and number two article 21a talks about right to education right to free and compulsory education now forget about the right to free and compulsory education we have our children who are in relief camps without proper education we have articles 15 17 and 46 where 15 talks about uh, nothing in this article or in clause 2 of article 29 shall prevent the state from making any special provision for the advancement of any socially and educationally backward classes of citizens or for the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes where the minority educational institutions are being attacked we have article 25 clause 1 of the constitution guarantees all the citizens the right to have freedom of conscience and the right to profess practice and propagate religion and how our religious institution the churches more than 300 plus churches are burned down. So all of this goes against the provision of the constitution, which is to safeguard the minorities, the minorities here in case, the cookies, right? Hence, it is crystal clear that there are explicit instances of academinocide targeting the cookies. It is therefore crucial to acknowledge and address any systematic inequalities or injustices within the educational system that may disproportionately affect minority communities. The bowl is now in the court of the Supreme Court to address these critical issues that has far-reaching ramifications for the cookies who are faithful abiding citizens of the largest democracy in the world that is India. Thank you very much. Now we'll proceed with the with addressing the pertinent topic on academia side. We'll have the first panelist, Mr. Pauzukup Guite, who is the president of Cookie Students Organization, Delhi and NCR. Sir, may you please take uh, 
Hi, good morning everyone. Okay, that means you are awake. Uh, good afternoon everyone. Yes. I'm so glad that I can find or we can find this much of audience. And we are said, we can say that we are cramming. Because if three or four, four or five people were here, we can't say it's cramming, right? This much of people in this red whole size room. So we can say we are cramming, right? So thank you for the audience. And today's press conference, I am in this panel more as a student, not as a president of this Kuki Students Organization, the Lenin NCR. Because I have been severely affected mentally, physically. As a university student or college student, my documents have been burned. The way how I speak is like an analogy, like, okay, it's not my personal documents were burned, but as an affected cookie student, my documents have been burned. And for those who have or who are done with the degree and have come out of the university or college and looking for the job opportunities, their futures has been scrapped again. The last instance of which was SSC result. Beside this SSC result, we have come across many job opportunities being blocked for the cookie people in the state of Manipur, not center service, the state service or the state job opportunities. So, simply put, the two dispensations that I have in my career, there's as a student and as aspirant of job opportunities have been put at the mercy of the Maitai's mobocracy. Maitai more justice so it's like my futures both as a student and as aspirant of job opportunities have been shut or blocked by this infamous form of government called mobocracy it's no more government it's no more a governance it's not about embarrassing government it's more of mobocracy in connivance with, yeah, of course, in connivance, in, in, in connivance with his people like Arambai Tengol, Mete Lipun, and the like. So, with this pain in my heart or in our heart, the KSO Delhi and NCR have come up with this special press conference today with this uh, idiosyncratic academinocyte. Please don't go through any dictionary. Do not go through any Google. You won't find it. It's a academinocyte or academicocyte. Anyone. So this one is the second attempt of the Maitis. So in detail, I will discuss about these two attempts. I put this way. The two-prong Maitis art of warfare. They have two-prong strategy. One is genocide. And the second one is academinocyte. So this is what I call the modus operandi of Maitis in this ethnic conflict, which is meticulously planned and which is pre-planned and well-planned one. So one which is genocide is adopted by the youth leadership. Two, this academinocyte is what propagated by the scholars, intellectuals like uh, Premananda Yumnam, Dr. Yumnam Premananda, who is also a social professor and head of law faculty of Manipur University, and also Bimol Akoism, who is the intending MP candidate in Manipur right now in Manipur. He spoke indirectly as to how his Maiti community should dismantle 
the thinking process of the cookie people so he is one of those people who have been propagating for dismantling the education or let's say thinking process of the cookie people so first extremist you leaders like Korunganba, Pramod Singh have been uh, propagating for a complete annihilation of the cookies a phenomenon which uh, common people call as genocide so the flashback you know the flashback of this attempt of genocide I don't have to mention we know it's very obvious it's very clear so uh, second one the mighty scholars thinkers or intellectuals of extremist leading leaning I mean have been espousing for this dismantling of educational systems of the cookies examples as I said one of which is Dr. Yumnam Premananda head and associate professor law faculty Manipur University and he once put in his one of TV panel discussions this way if you want to anni annihilate the cookies from the soil of Manipur one should dismantle first their education there here means the cookie people so in a way in a way it is not a surprise as to why extremist leaders have taken resort to burning our academic documents uh, be it from university college or uh, schools had these youth organizations like Arambai Tengol, Mete Lipun uh, been successful in their experiment of genocide academic documents would not have been burned to ashes or let's say if not a single cookie was spared or butchered to death then why need for burning the documents rather they would have uh, re, uh, they would have done forgery forgery with our documents to build their own careers benefits or riches, riches as a thief as they have always been known we have known him as thieves right so I mean if uh, they were successful in genocide this academinocide one would not have followed rather they would uh, have taken our documents and done forgery for gaining their own benefits whether they would use it for gaining state uh, job opportunities or anything so failing to succeed in the genocidal attempt on the cookies in the first instance they launched this second attempt or say plan B of burning the academic documents of the cookie students <coughs> this is what the cookie students organization Delhi and NCR calls as academicocide or academicocide these academicocidal exercises are being carried out under the auspices of none other than the Maite academicians themselves. The Maite academicians are ones who were responsible for burning the students' academic documents. But they failed again. Yeah, it's obvious that we have suffered a lot their unsuccessful attempt. Let's imagine if they uh, were successful, what would our future be? So they were not, uh, they, it's said to be they were not successful and in both the attempts, genocide, genocidal attempt, academinocidal attempt, they met the Waterloo. They failed so far. And they won't be successful in future also. Because as a student community, we are here, we are here across the cities of the country. We will be protesting, we will be uh, shouting against them for these illegal acts that they have done to the innocent cookie students. So, let's uh, let me come a little bit to my topic, which says a political. Why I call it explicating the political? Because there is an element of being political in these two attempts of 
uh, genocide and academinocide. Mainly, I would like to focus on how political it is on this academinocidal attempt. As I said, they were failing in the first attempt of genocide. Then, in this academinocide attempt, the government began to sneak secretly or surreptitiously in any way possible from a backdoor channels they started a spree recruitment spree wherein the cookies never figured in the list of the results all the st reservations being awarded to the fellow tribal nagas none of the cookie people were figured in the list of the result this is i should say political because this is due to the interference infamous interference not intervention intervention is a good way interference interference of the state government in this job recruitment agency like manipur public service Com commission and the most as i said recent one is ssc staff selection commission conducted gd constable exam 2022 this result were decla not declared on time but it was declared this year 2024 after two years on 15 march this year but it suffered a very unfortunate story it declared it was declared on 15th but after three days of its declaration the mighty people formed a joint action committee they approached the government state government then the state government promptly uh, sent his chief secretary to the center Vinit Joshi and after like one or two days a revised result came up because in the first result uh, more than 170 cookie successful students were uh, visible were there hardly any three or four mates were there so out of this pure jealousy they came up with this uh, political channels of uh, sending or pressurizing the chief secretary Vinit Joshi to the center and they were successful and the result came up again in, uh, in a revised one and about 50 successful students initially successful cookie students lost in the revised result it's very unfortunate so others like SSC it is a job recruiting or a job recruitment agency why it lose its credibility for entertaining this political interference this is a big question so even the KSO general headquarters has filed or lots a complaint against this uh, a step of uh, SSC and we are again asking for a revision of those uh, dear recruited 50 cookie successful students so let's see how the result uh, in few days time and the withdrawal of the SSC result 2022 also undermines transparency and fairness in the recruitment process it seems SSC result for Manipur was recorded just for the fact that successful cookie students were more in numbers compared to Mate candidates. As I said, this shows the peer jealousy. So this is one of in one of the initiatives in their academic attempt or campaign. Now let me shorten it. Let me come back to the state of Manipur. Recruitment spree in Manipur raises concerns over transparency, allegations of discrimination against cookies. So the worst forms of discrimination against tribals or particularly the cookies in Manipur have been a long-standing one. It becomes uh, conspicuous uh, with uh, the outbreak of this ethnic conflict, uh, conflict on 3rd May 2023. Uh, so in this regard, a case in point is the result that was held by the PHED, Public Health Engineering Department, 
for section officer grades 1 and 2 recruitments. Here, uh, the 99 ST reserve seats were devoid of any cookie candidate. 29, 29 uh, ST reserve seats were uh, provided to the ST for this department exam in which none of the cookie were uh, successful or say featured in the result. And the uh, second one is the ADC Churasanpur notification there was a suit on November 9, 2022 for 125 posts. It was already uh, notified in the year 2022 but until today, until this moment, no exam has ever been conducted. And the second one is Consumer Affairs PDS Manipur examination. It was held here. Yeah. No doubt it was held on September 9, 2021. The result was declared on 3rd March 2024, this month again. But very unfortunate, no cookies were featured again in this list because in these exam centers, no cookies can go and write the exam there. And the other one, the other one is GAD Secretary Recruitment for Stenographer. And the other one is MCPDCL, this electricity department. And also the Education Department of the Government advertised 120 vacancies in which none of the cookies can be seen successful. And the other one is the PhD Public Health Engineering Department again by the Government of Manipur. Which announced 91 vacancies back in 2023 and same thing all the st seats were already occupied by the naga tribal fellow tribals not by virtue of their being by virtue of their quality because more because the cookies were ignored in this exam and there are instances, many instances or many notifications in this regard, like the state government notifications where minor, minor exams were held. And when it comes to notification, e notification, it's good for all. But when it comes to exam centers, that's the problem. They don't provide any center to the hill districts of the Kuki people. Then they will provide the centers only in Imphal. That's the worst one. In this scenario of uh, ethnic conflict, how can a Kuki aspirant go to Imphal Valley and write the exam, which we call uh, the Valley of Death? Knowing the fact that it's a Valley of Death, how one can go and write the exam there? So, this is our great concern as a student community. The Cookie Students Organization, Delhi and NCR, with deep pain in our heart. We have taken this initiative of a special press conference against this infamous campaign called Academy No Sight. So, therefore, it would not be wrong for the government to immediately hold, stop ongoing recruitment procedures until a semblance of solution, not peace, okay? Solution. We want a political solution. As I have been saying to my friends, it's not peace which we are looking for. It's justice or solution in the form of any political uh, solution could be uh, you with a legislature or any form better than that, not less than that. So until this semblance of political in political solution is given to the Kuki people, the government of Manipur are hereby appealed to quit or stop their recruitment spree. Education is the cornerstone of development and progress in any society. By neglecting the educational needs of the Kuki community, the government of Manipur is not failing its duty but also perpetrating injustice. This is another injustice. This is the injustice. They are the this both the government and the Maitai move, which I call democracy. They are the like pesticide. The pesticide kills the pest, right? So they are like the 
even the government and the mob themselves are like pest or like pesticide they are get them in side they are chemicals that kills the academic progress of the cookie people they are like pest literally this is what academinocyte means because they attempt to annihilate the cookie people in terms of their education so it is time for the government of Manipur to uphold its responsibility to provide equal opportunities educational opportunities if they want to organize or call a recruitment in their departments so that we can write our exams in our own hill districts be it Kangui, Lamka, More, anywhere of our own districts. So it is high time not only cookie students organization the and CR but the cookie student communities across the countries across uh, uh, city branches will have to stand out against this campaign of academy no side of the May days. So I appealed the government of Manipur and Birin Singh and, uh, and its uh, people, the mob whom he has been using this for for the last 10 months or so to stop both genocide as well as academy genocide so that we can live together as a good neighbor in the future thank you <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President, for highlighting the political, especially in the case of Manipur government's recruitment spree, that's what you call it, and how conveniently the Manipur government is actually perpetrating injustices in the form of employment opportunities. See, ladies and gentlemen, if you understand, if you understand the cost of war, you will likely not declare war on anyone. All the Maytays, the very civil organizations, and everyone have declared war on the Kuki people. Today, the Kukis have not yet declared a formal war, official war, against the Maytays. Today, imagine 30 years down the line, the cookie society will pay a heavy price because if this recruitment process continues to take place, we will be devoid of government employees in the future. You and I have to speak up, have to speak up. Don't be scared. We're fighting against injustice. We're not fighting against somebody uh, who is fairly, you know, doing things. They're going all out against the constitution of India. And you have the constitution to back you up. If you're still scared to pick, speak for your rights, I'm telling you, you'll continue to be suppressed. And you'll have to bear the brunt of atrocities, any form of atrocities, and there will be no redemption. Well, let us move to the next and listen to another panelist on, um, he'll be talking about how information is a wild education. So without any further ado, may I now invite Dr. T.S. Haukip who is the president of World Cookie Joe Intellectual Council, to please take the podium. Thank you. Hello and good afternoon, one and all. First of all, I am really very grateful to the almighty God and to all the members who gathered together here 
Uh, before I begin my topic, I just want to share a few words. Since I have been not using English for the for a decade, I have been tongue-tied. However, I shall try my level best to uh, give the presentation. And before that, uh, I have been there in the ground in the hometown for the last nine months regarding our this council. You know, when the current mayhem suddenly took upon our people when we were unprepared on the 3rd of May 2023. As I have said to some other meetings, all our leaders, CSOs, were running from pillar to post to advocate our stranded people and also to give relief and rehabilitation to all IDPs. We were helpless in terms of money, in terms of medicine, in terms of everything. Everything was cut off. So to fill up the gap and also to stand behind our CSOs, a group of members, we gathered together and we formed this intellectual council to let the national and international community the plight of our people and currently at present i am stationed there in vashan Kuns, and it's been about 15 days we are on a mission <coughs> on a mission for some uh, this political and social uh, <coughs> lobby matters and today I'm very glad and I'm very thankful that this morning brother Mr. Coop, our esteemed president, contacted me and to prepare for this short presentation. And I hardly got three hours to pay to prepare for this. And for this uh just as one of the victims of the terminology academy academy no side side yeah i too have been one of the first uh, these uh, victims in the manipur university while i was registered as a phd scholar there in manipur university from 2003 to 10, uh, all my struggles, all my days and nights, sleepless nights, all my struggles go in vain. I was kept in a position that at the last moment, I was not in the position to complete my thesis <clears throat> and also to submit my thesis. So being one of the most one of the victims of this academic site in Manipur. Today, I am really grateful in one way, and I took this opportunity, and also I am really grateful to the organizing committee, uh, that is Kaso Delhi and NCR. So my uh, respect goes to all the advisory members of Kaiser Delhi and its managing president, then secretary and colleagues, uh, high dignitary, slide, respected Major Amit Bansar, Dr. Tara Manchin, and esteemed uh, this media personals and all the members who have gathered together here. So to, be, to begin with my topic, I should say, to begin with the topic, I shall just briefly read out some 
uh, some of the materials, some of the uh, write-up that I prepare the randomly within a matter of three hours. There are some copies, around 10 copies are here, and I hope our officers can hand over it to some dignitaries and media personnel. Okay, <clears throat> let's go with the uh, with the topic. Misinformation is a wild education. Yeah, it's very truly. It is really uh, true that as our former uh, my co panelists have started earlier. Actually, I, as I have said, I was pursuing my PhD under Manipur University on the, tap, on the topic ethnicity and insurgency in Myanmar, Burma, a comparative study of the Kukchi and current insurgencies. That was my topic. It really uh, rendered me so helpless. Being the topic is so vast, I run here and there. I used to go to Mizoram Boulder, uh, Myanmar Boulder to meet all those gene insurgent groups as well as I was struggling a lot to meet those current rebel leaders. Uh, to speak something about Myanmar Burma, you know, the Chins, the Shan and all the other any groups are uh, usually we can meet them here in, uh, in <laughs> Delhi. Most of them we can meet them. But as far as these current any groups are concerned, since they are located at the most eastern part of uh, this Burma, border to China and Thailand, they are hardly available to be met here in Delhi. In the year 2007, I came to Delhi waiting for more than seven, eight days, and I happened to get the chance to meet one of the rebel leaders. And from him, I collect some of the materials which I have needed. And I was of the intention to go for my field work there in Myanmar. But the rebel leader suggested me that I should go to Thailand rather than Myanmar, because in Myanmar, Burma, all the leaders, all the insurgent leaders were out of out from Myanmar and they usually uh, take shelter there in Thailand. I was prepared, I got the visa and everything, booking everything I got, but the problem is my supervisor, he happened to be a mate. He did not permit me to go and visit my, uh, and I mean to go to my uh, field visit. However, I managed to uh, complete the thesis. Though I was not allowed to complete my thesis and submit in the Manipur University, I once again gear up. And after a gap of four years, I admitted myself in another university <coughs> by who or crook. I just completed the thesis. Now let's come to the main topic. As the subject goes, misinformation is a wild education. The word, I shall write, I shall start it. Yeah, the word information as given to me by the organizing committee. The word information, according to English dictionary, is a fact or facts provided about something or someone relating to an event happening around us. The antonym of information is misinformation. And whenever this misinformation, that is facts or true facts are not given out, pub the public, public are misinformed. In the case of the current war that broke out on 3rd May of 2023, there was a rumor 
misinformation spreaded by some uh, mighty protagonists that a nursing student from Chiruchanpur Medical College was raped. That was the propaganda. That was the wrong information spreaded by some mighty protagonists that enraged the whole mighty community who swung into full action towards the whole Kukizo com community residing in Greater Imphal Valley on the night of 3rd May 2023 and 4th of 4th May of the same year where the Maitis evicted all the ethnic Kukizo people in this criminal of infants, women, elderly, all children. Yeah, the misinformation on rape case in Churuchanpur was clarified by the then director of general of police. Though the misinformation was spreaded, the general director of police P. Donger on 5th May after on the second day he clarified to the public and in social media and printed electronic media that no such raps took place in Churichanpur. Apart from DZP, the father of the, the purported uh, rap, rap nurse also have clarified nicely in Imphal Bears uh, Impact TV on the 5th May of 2023. This uh, sources can be found in Ukrul Times of 5th May 2023 and also Impact TV of 5th May 2023. A few of the glittering examples of misinformation and academic knowledge in Manipur can briefly analyze as under. Now about misinformation. The misinformation that ravages the whole state Some, some of the striking points that I would like to highlight for the audience, especially for the uh, media personals, is that all info bears Manipur state media, including printed and electronic, electronic spreading misinformation on cookies attacking metis. That has been the usual. That has been the daily news misinformation wrong information published by all the info based uh, manipur state papers and uh, papers whether printed or electronics whereas in reality the information published by the state uh, these uh, papers state media is the opposite it is, you know, being uh, the majority community of more than 15 lakhs. They have all sorts of uh, this manpower, guns, you know, 6,000 arms were given out. And also 6 lakhs ammunition were given out from all the police stations in, located within Greater Infar Valley. All these weapons were used by the radical Maitai groups such as Maitai Lipun and Rambai Tengel. And they used to attack every now and then all the cookie villages at the peripheral areas of Tangle Manipur, rendering more than 360 churches uh, vandalized or burned down and more than 200 cookie villages <coughs> burned down to ISIS within a week. The misinformation printed or published by the state, Manipur state media can be rectified by the clarifications 
the, refut uh, the refuting uh, PRs issued by the Assam Rifles. That as of now, I could not uh, locate the the name of the particular uh, local TV channel. That one particular channel was broadcasting the realities, the facts. Whenever it is uh, attacking cookie villages and kill the cookies. They used to announce it as it is. They were abiding uh, the, what to say, the journalism ethics. And that particular uh, TV channel was closed down by the militant groups. Then the next one is, uh, <coughs> Manipur-based, infar-based newspapers and local TV channels were also clo closed down for three days because of the intervention of the interferences of the Mete militants. As a journalist and as a media person, they have ethics. When the journalist ethic, ethics were abided by these uh, press men, the Mete militants used to trade them one after another. And because of that, in the year 2023 in the month of November. That is from 24 November to 27 November. Three days, uh, these media persons from Manipur, especially based in Infa, they closed down for three days. Then the last point that I would like to put forward here is that the some rifles I have said the Assam Rifles have refuted many times upon wrong allegations on them for citing the cookies. They, as a, as a security personnel of India and central forces, they neither cite the cookie zones, they nor the maitis. They are playing the the security role to defend and also to protect and to uphold the buffer zones. That is the uh, work, that is the responsibility shoulder day and night tirelessly by Assam Rifles. That can be seen in Sangai Express, 2nd January 2024. Now let's come to this academy no side. Here I have I put forward some four points. And the first one is, it has, uh, I came across in a YouTube channel in Maitai dialect where a professor, a particular professor from Manipur University stated in his YouTube uh, lecture that to defeat, to defeat the cookies, they have, they have to be defeated first in academic field so as to subjugate them of their culture, tradition, and history. That was in the month of August. And accordingly, in the uh, third, third week of August, When the result of TDC three years degree course examination 2022 was announced, the Manipur University implemented the, the propaganda, the instigation, uh, this uh, propagated by this Maite professor that most of the students belonging to Raven College, they were awarded zero marks and some of them were awarded minus point marks sources you can even now we can get the sources from hills journal epow hip news of 23rd august 2023 then the second point is 
on a, on account of education academy no side by the Manipur state 25 house uh, 25 high schools from cookie dominated state districts of Lamka, Churachanpur and Kang Kangui Kangpokpi that were affiliated to CBSE Central Board of Secondary Education was cancelled at the complaint of the Manipur state government by CBSC on the 20 December 2023. It can be uh, found in India Today and Economic Times of 20 December 20, 2023. And the fourth one is, as Mr. Khub had highlighted, in the Staff Selection Commission GD examination 2023 result out of the 223 Sadhu Khas and Sadhu tribe candidates selected on merit basis from the state of Manipur, there were 178 Kukizo boys and girls. Based on result declared on 15 March 2024, which was cancelled by the Staff Selection Commission at the pressure of the Maitis and the government of Manipur. Sources. Press Trust of India, 22nd March 2024. Then 4A, in, in the state of Manipur, there are 28 uh, fully sponsored by the government of India educational institutions. All these 28 institutions, colleges and universities are located only in Ufa Valley. Mention can be made of the lone university in the state of, of Manipur at Kanchipur. That is Manipur University, followed by modern college, liberal college, and other 24 colleges are located in Imphal Valley, whereas only one government college each are located in Hill Districts. <coughs> this information can be downloaded from list of colleges, universities, Manipur government. <coughs> Then B, in the state of Manipur, there are 69 government, uh, government sponsored higher secondary schools in Manipur, of which 95% are located only in Infa Valley. Most uh, in Fau Valley and only just one, for example, Juchanpur is the second town in Manipur, whereas it has got only one government uh, college, only one. Likewise, other districts, I'm not very much sure about the other hill districts. When Churuchanpur, the second largest uh, district and town in Manipur has only one I don't think all the other hill districts may, may or may not have. That is the situation, that is the, uh, the facility or the disparity of educational institutions run and managed and financed by the government of India for Manipur. Then the last but not the least is, as of now, there are four central universities in Manipur. Such as Manipur University located at Kanchipur, then DM University located at North AOC or Thameban, and Agriculture University located at Iroi Semba, and Manipur Sports University located at Kuman Lampa. All these are located only in the heart of Impal town. This is the vulnerability and the situation the plight of the hill tribes where the majority may they they are misusing or they are manipulating all the funds all the schemes all the plans and policies all the projects 95 percent of the schemes from central government has been manipulated and manipulated by the majority Mete community leaving behind the tribals as a as a tribal denied of uh, all the facilities educationally 
socially and in all the fields we are neglected to. So to conclude my presentation, I once again appeal to the to all esteem uh, these media personnel to kindly give attention to the vulnerability of the Koki people, the people, the community who stand for India under Netaji Subhachandra Bose. My forefathers have been, has been fighting the imperial government to defend India. In India, you know, most of the tribal communities have gone to France at the at the order of the Emperor British government. However, my forefathers, they confronted the British and as a punishment, the British subjugated us and fragmented us into tribes and they ignored the outer Manipur that they have are documented as Cookie Hills. So it is time for fellow Indian citizens as well as the government of India to look into the plight of the each freedom fighter fight fighter community to to be protected under the constitution of India to survive and to live as other fellow Indian citizens. Thank you. So these are mere political slogans, mere political gimmicks, just to earn, you know, votes and brainwash people so that they stay in power. So it is nothing. Every deeds done by Birin Singh led government is only to subjugate, subjugate, only to annihilate the cookies. And we have seen that how Every state missionaries under his power are in cahoots, you know, are in collusion with, uh, with the dispensation. Moving on, we will have another presentation, very pertinent one, where Sailin Mang Haukip, who is the General Secretary of Cookie Students Organization, Delhi and NCR, will speak on educational annihilation of the cookies Gross, gross violation of Article 16 of the Con Indian Constitution. Over to you, Salem Ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to say thanks uh, to uh, my co-panelists, all of them. Uh, in fact, it's an honor to share the dice with Dr. T.S. Uh, Okip and uh, Pu uh, Viswajit. So and uh, so, in front of uh, Nu Tara and uh, Nazar Amit Dansal, I'm a bit nervous. Uh, however, uh, my speech will be based on uh, some data and facts, which I shall lay out. And uh, yeah, that would be uh, the main thing. And uh, if you look at the uh, you know the uh, infrastructural and uh, the infrastructure and the development disparity between the hills and the valley which uh, the previous speaker uh, doc, uh, Dr. T.S. O'Keefe has uh, a little bit talked about uh, uh, you can look at the uh, five, four five years uh, past uh, state budget wherein uh, almost 90 percent of the state fund allocation uh, was i mean allocated to the valley which is just 10 percent and the tribal uh, the nagas and the jo people uh, we we can say uh, the cookie in the context of manipur we find only 10% of them all together, the Nagas and the uh, Kuki Zo people were allocated only 10%. That says everything. That the intellectual, interestingly, that has been negated by the uh, Meitei 
uh, intellectuals, you know, like uh, most prominent one being Bimol Akhoizam, he has been negating, trying to uh, justify why uh, these things happened. But there are facts and data. Uh, if you, but one has to look into it uh, very critically. There has they ha one has to have a critical exploration of the uh, uh, what has transpired the violence and why uh, there has been a decades of injustice uh, against uh, the the tribal, especially the Kukis, Kuki people. However, I'm going to focus uh, much on uh, incidents and uh, injustices which uh, started, I mean, which happened after the thought of May 2023. So, uh, on thought May, when the differences boil down into ethnic violence, or uh, we prefer to call the ethnic cleansing, ethnic cleansing, See, uh, sponsored by the state, uh, the the uh, the hopes and the uh, many young uh, prominent uh, scholars, students having a bright future has been uh, rendered uh, hollowed. And uh, <coughs> uh, like uh, Mr. President has already uh, spoken about, the uh, prominent you know uh, intellectuals who uh, tend to explicitly, explicitly, you know, outrightly stated uh, uh, their intention to uh, annihilate the education system or completely dismantle the education system of the uh, Kukizo people. First of all, uh, uh, these uh, these incidents, uh, uh, most of us, uh, more especially the youths and the educated uh, 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 persons, are not oblivious of these facts and data. However, I'm going to present. I'm going to start with the systematic dis discrimination and deliberate failure of uh, the state. The first one is the uh, uh, the cookie students have uh, shockingly, you know, received zero marks, like uh, the earlier panelists have. Uh, uh, spoken about even in a mile. That is what is shocking. We have never seen any student failing in uh, a mile, which is their own language in, 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 in Manipur. But then like a lot of uh, students after uh, the start of the violence, ethnic uh, 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 cleansing started. It happens in, in, in the state of Manipur. And uh, August 22, Rayban College, uh, uh, which is in Lamka, uh, revealed that 10 out of 76 students who had prepared the examination, only 10 were shown to, uh, to have passed the exams. And there is another incident uh, the, of uh, uh, the low students in Manipur, uh, which is never heard about. In, 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 in the whole of uh, India, that is, some of the students' uh, results have been declared and they are declared pass, and some of them, they have put it as withheld. Their declared are, uh, results are not uh, shown to them. Even after appealing to the institution, the, uh, the institution has not given, uh, I mean, shown the uh, mark seats and uh, the results as well. And even those who have passed has, are yet to receive the provisional certificates and uh, mark seats, which is why they are not able to uh, enroll in the Baal Council of India. And uh, we have seen a viral video uh, wherein uh, uh, a flight attendant, a Meitei guy has burned uh, certificates and documents of the cookies all right those are evidence but then they are not booked yet the the state uh, uh, police department refused to even entertain uh, simple uh, FIR uh, even after several attempts uh, to lodge the uh, FIR and on uh, Tuesday, 21 November 2023, 
uh, displaced Kuki uh, medical students were not able to write their exams. They took to the streets to stay supporters with a memorandum submitted to the governor uh, stating that they have been intentionally uh, sidelined and discriminated. Uh, 27 out of uh, 30 uh, displaced uh, students attending classes at CMC, Churchanpur Medical College, after being informed over email that they were debarred from preparing, appearing the test uh, by their uh, parent college, contacted uh, Mr. Darun Kumar. However, uh, these students, when they went after the, uh, approaching uh, CCP, the, there was an arrangement. They were given assurance that uh, they would be allowed to appear the examination. So when the students go, uh, went to the examination center, uh, the question paper were uh, not provided to them. Thus, they were not able to uh, appear the, give the examination. Uh, this has been reported by the Queen, the Print, and some other uh, news outlet. And uh, so, the, the, uh, regarding this issue, the KSO uh, has uh, submitted a writ petition in the Supreme Court, and we are yet to uh, we are waiting for the hearing, uh, which will uh, come up shortly after, uh, maybe next week. And uh, uh, CBSE, uh, CBSE de-affiliation, a lot of uh, uh, private and uh, private schools in the uh, Kuki Zo districts, uh, Kangpo P, especially Kangpo P and Churachanpul, have, uh, because many students have not been able to attend classes because affiliated, because those are affiliated in uh, Manipur government. So they have, <coughs> receive uh, they have been allowed to affiliate I mean affiliated in CBS and the CBSC uh, that has <coughs> uh, those uh, because of that uh, those journal educational officers who have given the uh, 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 signature to for the uh, affiliation were suspended And uh, so, uh, as far as the record uh, maintained by KSO Delhi and uh, K uh, KSO had uh, different branches of KSO, we have received uh, towards uh, 100 and 105 schools, uh, government schools, both government schools and private schools being towards and burn into ashes. Some, uh, most of them, including the most recent one, uh, recent one being uh, in Moray, wherein uh, three uh, schools were burned to ashes. This is the uh, list of the schools uh, uh, burned down so far. 105 schools. And uh, most interestingly, uh, through viral videos and uh, some information from uh, inside, we have received uh, information uh, that uh, St. Peter's School and Lee Faith School in Shanghai Pro Peiteveng. These are uh, institutions uh, in uh, uh, Kukizo Colony. These schools are used as uh, a hideout for Arambai, Tengol, and Meitei Lipun, and the uh, UNLF, and many other uh, Meitei militants. Leafy, yes. Excuse me? Leafy school. Oh, yeah. Leafy. Yeah, Leafy. Okay. Leafy, yeah. Those are institutions in the uh, in the Kuki uh, colonies, uh, and uh, they are being used as a hideout for the uh, Meitei militants. Uh, 
yeah, Arambai Tangles and Medeli Guns. And we have seen the uh, uh, order from Delhi uh, High Court uh, uh, giving assurance uh, for an arrangement for the UPSC and uh, SSC examinations in the uh, uh, Kuki areas, Kangpupi, and one in Kangpupi, and another in uh, uh, Lamka, and uh, another one in Okrul. Uh, in tribal areas, uh, basically. But then, uh, Manipur government, uh, using its uh, political high-handedness, uh, has informed uh, the High Court, and influence, I should say, the High Court, and uh, uh, that has been nullified uh, by the uh, High Court for the reason being, there is no peace and normalcy in the hill areas. But, if we are to compare the kind of uh, semblance of uh, peace in the hill areas and uh, the uh, Meite dominated areas, our dominated areas are far better, more, more convenient, more colder for uh, conduct of, of uh, such examination, I should say. Uh, there are examples recently, a Muslim guy was kidnapped and uh, software attack, so belongings to the Nagas, uh, and, and, and these things always, you know, uh, continually happens in the valley areas. And uh, uh, the kind of uh, peace they are talking about, I should say, is uh, irrational nonsense, you know, uh, doesn't make sense uh, to me. And, uh, uh, and NIT students and uh, dental uh, uh, and also the dental students uh, from Jenims and Wins, uh, they have been uh, denied of uh, their, uh, their education uh, in the sense that uh, they were not even uh, there was not there was no arrangement for uh, classes and they were denied NOC even. And uh, they have approached the KSO Delhi and NCR, and for uh, the NIT and the dental students uh, specifically, we have filed a writ petition in the Supreme Court. Uh, and uh, uh, NIT for NIT, the hearing has uh, already happened, took place, and uh, the court uh, uh, have given an assurance that uh, they will be. Uh, there will there will be an arrangement for the transfer of the students to other uh, you know uh, NIT students uh, most uh, uh, suspected one being NIT uh, Silchar. so luckily the uh, the supreme court at least uh, uh, has uh, been in support of the students otherwise the state like uh, the previous uh, panelists have uh, mentioned is in complete uh, connivance with the you know the uh, the militants and complicit of the uh, in this violence and uh, another interesting uh, case uh, being uh, government polytechnic uh, takiel in infa uh, wherein their students uh, uh, since uh, the violence started the, the the head of the department uh, directly told him that they are no longer uh, the students of the institution. And they remove them in the WhatsApp groups and other you know, groups wherein all the students are there. Those uh, kooky uh, students in the groups were removed, stating they are no longer uh, part of this institution. So this... Uh, and, and at the same time, uh, uh, the case of uh, uh, fine art as well, uh, very similar with the case of uh, uh, government, uh, this uh, polytechnic uh, institution. They have uh, faced a similar uh, grievances. They, they share a simil similar grievances. And for all these uh, students, the, uh, we have submitted uh, earlier, before we approached the Supreme Court, we have submitted uh, so many representation, including Gita Mittal Committee and uh, 
uh, home ministry and uh, uh, even their parent institution so many representation we have submitted we have even approached a dental council of india and the uh, nursing council of india we went to up met the uh, uh, some uh, prominent figures and institutions uh, if they would uh, want to you know admit them after receiving the noc but then those uh, those were uh, those institution those attempts were despite those attempts uh, we had to approach the supreme court i should say So when you look at this, uh, uh, you know, what has happened and uh, that kind of discrimination, uh, uh, my topic th does not encompass uh, uh, the whole things. I mean, all, it is not affecting only the Article 16 uh, of the Constitution, which is uh, equal opportunity, but affecting so many, uh, you know, uh, fundamental rights and constitutional provisions uh, uh, provided uh, to us, uh, to, to us as a citizen of uh, India. Uh, the let, uh, mention should be made, uh, like Article uh, uh, 14, which is uh, right to equality, and, uh, and and also Article 21 of the Constitution, personal uh, uh, life and liberty, and also uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals uh, has uh, resolved to ensure quality education. But when I look at the, you know, the, uh, the, when I find what has happened, what is happening, what took place, that kind of discrimination that uh, is uh, meted out to the Kuki Zo people, our, there seems to be no constitutional rights provided to us, no constitutional right protecting our uh, uh, rights, completely violated. Every single constitutional provision is violated. And uh, at, the, uh, at the last, uh, the, the most recent institution, uh, I mean the, the injustice and the violation of uh, uh, constitutional, the mon I should even say monolithic principles of the uh, 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 democratic system in India is Birin declaring, you know, Birin led government declaring uh, 30, uh, third and uh, uh, this uh, Good Friday and Easter Sunday uh, as working day. So uh, <coughs> I should. Uh, Uh, so um, <clears throat> I should end my uh, speech uh, here and uh, thank you so much uh, and uh, like I said earlier I, <laughs> I'm kind of uh, a little bit nervous uh, with the you know uh, presentation, and I never like uh, speaking in uh, formally like uh, in such uh, this kind of occasion. So uh, I'm so sorry about that. And thank you so much, everyone. There is nothing to be apologetic about that because you have done uh, justice to your presentation. It's just a conclusion. No problem. Way to go, Mr. <laughs> Peter. Uh, General Secretary, moving to the last presentation, we have yeah. okay. Advocate Big Bezit, who will be uh, speaking on the big picture, unraveling state engineer injustices. Okay. Um, so before you take the podium, may I request our assets to please come to the token, and also uh, the President of the Kisudet Organization to please um, acknowledge advocate this visit with uh. our traditional mark.
Thank you. Over to you, sir. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Audible. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Cookie Students Organization for inviting me to this event and all the office bearers and the members of media who are present here. Thank you all of, all of you for coming. And of course, everybody present. I have known uh, before uh, Dr. Tara, Major Bansal, rest of us are first timers. Topic assigned to me is uh, overall picture and state engineered injustices. So first of all, I would like to say and point out that overall picture in Manipur right now for the last 10 months is of a total state failure. There is a long list of state failures, either state failures or state engineered denials or injustices or denials of rights and freedoms or state engineered deliberate injustices meted out to the tribals, particularly the Kukizo people by the state. So I would not like to even dwell on which communities is uh, presiding over the state right now, which community is in power. It's needless to say everybody knows who is in the government, who is running the government. So naming, uh, although uh, the topic, uh, this thing, we have uh, named the community in particular, which is the majority community, which is the uh, Metes, but even if we point out just at the state, it's automatic, the community is automatically pointed out. So, because I have not been to Manipur since the beginning of this uh, conflict. Before that, I have been there several times, many times. But after this, I have not been to Manipur. But whatever news was able to filter to the mainland and to the people here, out of, uh, although very little news filtered out, because most of the local uh, media is uh, valley based media and it's controlled by Metes and the government. And, and in the beginning, all of the so called national media was, uh, was picking up news from the valley based media, which was hell bent on spreading misinformation and disinformation and a false narrative. We will, I will deal with it later. So there were few things which uh, came to our notice and which were, which appeared to be, not appeared to be, in fact, which were blatantly anti-tribal, anti-cookie and were, and amounted to denial of basic rights, denial of fundamental rights, denial of justice. Therefore, perpetration of injustice, state engineered, state orchestrated injustice. One, uh, I don't think anybody, uh, uh, people have missed at this point, but one thing which was very, very blatant and very, very ghastly done by the state government was derecognition of private schools by CBSC. A number of schools, I think it was, there were 30 such schools in Chor Chandpur, 27. De-recognition of such schools by CBSE at the behest of state government. How could CBSE do it after once uh, giving the affiliation, providing the affiliation, finalizing the affiliation? Because state wanted that and state wrote to the CBSE that they had not given the necessary uh, clearance because state is supposed to give a the education department from the state is supposed to give a clearance uh, for uh, recognition by any education board so it was now 
fact finding i don't know whether it has been done or not but it so happened that cbse finally revoked uh, its the, the affiliations of those schools and making an effort to find out whether the state clearance was given or not is not possible because all that all those records are sitting in imphal our people i mean tribals cannot go there to find out whether uh, those clearances were given because a lot of uh, false uh, narratives have been peddled not only by the uh, by the people by the community but also by the government by the state government uh, and uh, it needs to be found out by way of an investigation whether state actually did give uh, its recognition or not or if it did not give then why it did not give and if and whether it did give but later withdrew or later just forged up the documents mucked up the documents and and officials could say that we did not give the clearance an investigation is called out on this so this is a point which i would like to request everybody to point out in all our uh, all your future correspondences regarding education with the state then uh, other uh, uh, very blatant uh, injustice which has come to the notice of uh, uh, of the people here in the mainland is non uh, uh, non adjustment of kuki medical and nursing students because uh, the kuki uh, medical and nursing students who were in uh, the imphal uh, medical colleges now they cannot go and uh, go there so they should have been adjusted in other uh, i think chorachandpur is a central uh, is a central medical college or it's a state state okay 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 but the central government should have taken an initiative because the number is huge situation is very very desperate and uh, situation is very very volatile so it's the duty of the central government to take have to have taken such steps to adjust those students in other institutions which has not been done this is denial of a right to education although the law of right to education is only up to elementary education which should be mandatory and is the duty of the state but again uh, a, a a student uh, a youngster who has been uh, uh, already enrolled in a in an institution and is being denied that education just because of the violence and because of the fact that there is a de facto separation in the state and those students cannot cross over to the valley anymore to continue their education so it was the responsibility of the state to provide them alternative enrollment and alternative place of education this also should be noted and should be raised in all our uh, all uh, future uh, correspondence or communications with the state then other very very inhuman and uh, very i mean low kind of uh, state gesture which has come to our notice is that non provision of basic relief material to tribal idps to kuki idps who are living in the camps right now relief a lot of relief material is being assigned by the by the central government lot of relief material has been assigned by uh, the civil society organizations political parties by neighboring states but most of it is being partially uh distributed or allocated and uh, blatantly to the camps where mete uh, displaced people are are living right now and the state assistance to the uh, displaced uh, refugee camps or displacement camps which uh, where uh, where kuki uh, refu- uh, displaced people are uh, are living are dwelling right now the state relief <coughs> is not reaching those uh, neither the central government relief nor the state relief is reaching those camps because the uh, transportation is uh, is mostly denied either by way of blockades blockades or a lot of time it has been seen that relief material uh, the vehicles carrying relief material towards the towards the kuki areas towards the hill areas 
have been burnt on the way otherwise the roads are blocked most of the relief material is either coming via uh, mizoram which is a very very treacherous road it, the road is not good and it's not easy to take uh, any material from there ideal have, would have been that uh, relief material for the tribal areas for the kokki areas should have been air dropped like it is done almost everywhere in the world it should have been air dropped the army and the central forces the assam rifles they have got sufficient uh, air support to to have to uh, to carry out this uh, uh, this transportation of relief which they have so far not done and the state needs to be called out for this and this is very very deliberate that's why see had the state been helpless had the state been devoid of means then it could have been understood but it's not so we know the capacity of the state everybody knows the capacity of the state either in the form of state government or the union government and they have the means to air drop supplies to uh, to the to the hilly areas to the hill areas to the tribal areas which they have deliberately not done so this is one of the i mean worst and inhuman injustice that could have been imparted after this crisis has erupted then again this has come to the notice of the uh, concerned people the time and again the manipur government is calling for no work no pay this means that and knowing fully well that uh, kuki employees cannot join their duties in the valley area anywhere in the valley area so knowing fully well they have deliberately just to harass or to force them to come to the valley area again join their duties and get lynched and brutalized again so this has to be opposed all the kuki employees which were earlier employed in the in valley offices uh, of course state government or uh, most of the offices in imphal are in imphal they should have been reassigned to other districts or some whatever alternate arrangement should have been provided but this has not been done so far again injustice and denial of livelihood other very very deliberate and blatant activity of the state which came to notice of concerned people was the pushing of uh, methe police personnel into more the state could have avoided this because before this was done more was more or less peaceful there was no large scale violence there was no uh, tangible or substantial uh, displacement people were going about their lives but since more is a point of interest and is a important uh, trade uh, trade point cross border trade point so they want control of that so just to disturb more and make more also volatile they deliberately pushed uh, methe police personnel into more and trouble started there after that burning of schools burning of houses burning of villages uh, displacement of people from their homes everything began after that so this was also a well planned and deliberate act on the part of the state and amounts to state engineered injustice and also amounts to state engineered <coughs> multiple killing i would not call it ethnic cleansing at this point because the number has not reached that point but it was uh, state engineered violence then although uh, dr haukep has already enumerated this but i would also like to point out i pointed out earlier also that the straight con- state control over uh, the valley based media resulted in a lot of uh, disinformation being peddled into uh, into the mainstream and into their own society and people were made to believe that all the crisis all the violence has been started by was well, started from the hills it's it was started by the cookies it was started <coughs> after the 3rd may immediately during the 3rd may rally which is false which is a false narrative the rally had finished by i think 12 or 1 o'clock and uh, reports started coming in from kangwai and uh, 
Torbung? Yes. Torbung. Torbung. From after the rally was over and people had gone home. After that, mis massive misinformation started, which was pre-planned, and state was a party to it. It cannot be denied. State cannot deny this, their role in this. Otherwise, it is the duty of the state to immediately stop misinformation, which may lead to any kind of violence, which they did, which they chose not to do. So they abdicated from the responsibility of stopping uh, misinformation, and thereby all of this, all the entire sequence of events after has started with misinformation and continues till date with misinformation. So, and state is an active party in spreading misinformation. State should be called out for this. Also, Manipur, particularly the hill areas and tribal areas and the forest areas, they are sitting on vast reserves of natural resources which every forest everywhere in the world does. That's why corporations are after forests. Manipur is not alone. Corporations all over the world are after the forests and forest resources. It appears from the sequence of events starting from 2010 that the state is complicit, state in Manipur is complicit <coughs> with corporate entities and state wants to sell off the resources, the natural resources which belong to the people and which belong to the nation. They want to sell those resources off <coughs> to corporate giants, to corporate, to greedy corporates. There is an active example. In 2010, a Netherlands based company was given contracts for oil drilling and exploration in Manipur in three districts, Surachandpur, Tamenglong and Jiribam. But because of the local resistance, that plan could not fructify and the company had to abandon their project. But see, it's uh, waiting 10, 15, 20 years is no big deal for these big corporations. So they have been waiting since 2010. And now, one of the results, one of the consequences of this ongoing conflict is clearing of villages. Hundreds of villages have been cleared. And there is talk of rehabilitation, alternate settlements, etc., etc. But it will be made sure that people do not go back to those villages. Those villages are permanently cleared. This is the state effort. And all of them are being, whatever the planning for plans for rehabilitation are, the plans are for rehabilitating, uh, resettling them somewhere else, in some other areas. This could be a part of corporate conspiracy and state is clearly complicit in it. The state had, has once facilitated the corporates, it would like to facilitate them again. It's a big game. Oil and gas, they are the biggest movers <coughs> of world economy. Also, there is a corporate angle in the question of, of which the state is the main uh, <coughs> proponent the question of the question of border fencing with Myanmar. I think the border is 1,600 kilometer plus. It will take around 3.7 billion dollars to put a fence on that kind of border. 3.7 billion dollars is. 3 lakh crore plus. Who are they doing it for? Just because Metes are asking for it. They are not even living on the fence. They are not even living on the borders. No Mete village is there on the border. It's tribal villages on the border, either Mizos or the Kukis or the Nagas. There is no Mete village. Why, why are they asking for it? There is corporate greed. 
3.7 billion dollars that is 3 lakh crores plus rupees so we all can imagine the entire country can imagine the kind of contracts that will go to these uh, few crony companies crony corporations there there is no money to feed idps there is they don't have money to airdrop supplies uh, to 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 tribal uh, displaced uh, displacement camps this but somebody has money to spend on 3 for 3 lakh crores plus on border fencing which is not required which is anti people which will not help it does not provide any solution i have seen fences all over the world they don't provide any solution there was a wall in berlin not fence berlin had a wall which came down in 1989 even with a wall infiltration was going on so infiltration cannot be stopped with a fence if that is the reason they are giving although there is uh, inf infiltration is not even a problem but that's the reason the methods are giving which the state government is giving so this has to be resisted the issue of border fencing has to be resisted it does not it does no good to anyone it does no good to people it only does good to vested interest and corporate interest <coughs> then one more uh, very uh, blatant uh, and very mischievous uh, state uh, <clears throat> initiative has come to our notice which is attempts at delisting of cookies from manipur st list yeah. there is one gentleman named maheshwar uh, thanaojam so uh, this gentleman goes around uh, giving uh, interviews to all the same valley based uh, media and <coughs> and he somehow he cites a supreme court judgment of i think 2000 Five or six, wherein he says that the Supreme Court has said that cookies are not tribals. Then we found out. We tried to find that judgment out. Then we found that judgment. We studied that entire judgment. There was no such thing in the entire judgment. Judgment was about something else. Uh, judgment is there, but there is no such thing which he is so confidently saying in the media. and everybody is peddling his uh, this uh, his his version now this gentleman writes to the union ministry of tribal affairs asks them to delist cookies because supreme court judgment says so so the ministry i have the i have a copy of that letter i have shared with some people also i will share again so the tribal union tribal ministry writes back to him that we cannot take your suggestion suggestion has to come from state government and suggestion and recommendation has to come from state government and then it has to be justified it uh, by the tribal uh, ministry of tribal affairs and also uh, registrar general of india <coughs> till that point it was okay but the same union ministry of tribal affairs at the same time writes to the state government and calls for their recommendation <coughs> i mean they have written it in a very subtle manner not not blatantly but they have, in effect they have invited the suggestion from the state government then you give your suggestion what is your suggestion on this of course we know what suggestion is going to come from the state government and state government was prompt enough to announce a commission to decide the eligibility of cookies in the <coughs> in the st list and who uh, they called it an all tribes commission but i don't know it has whether it has started or not but the state has announced we know what is going to come from that commission so this is very very blatant and mischievous uh, move and initiative by the state government which needs to be checked in future <coughs> we can challenge this in the court also another state uh, mischief upcoming mischief is the upcoming lok sabha elections <coughs> i think more than a lakh on from both sides more than a 1 lakh people are displaced but state wants to both central and the manipur st uh, state government they want to go ahead with the 
with the Lok Sabha elections, where there is no arrangement for the displaced persons to vote. There is uh, no transparency in the selection of candidates and it has come to uh, our notice that uh, certain uh, cookie bodies have already decided to boycott the uh, upcoming Lok Sabha election. Certain Naga bodies have also uh, announced boycott of uh, upcoming Lok Sabha elections. I think ENPO had issued a, a statement saying that they would not allow anyone to even, uh, what do you call it, to even uh, uh, campaign in their areas. So when such a large number of population in a particular area wants to abstain from elections, and the government is not affected, it means that it is convenient for the government to have no cookie representation, to have no miso representation, to have no Naga representation, so that they can have people of their own choice coming to the parliament. And there is no representation, there is no voice of cookie people in the parliament. Otherwise, a concerned government would have gone running to the people and to the leaders and would have asked them the reasons and, and the solutions and the suggestions which is not happening. So this is another state, I would say state orchestrated <coughs> and uh, uh, election which the state wants to manipulate, which has to be resisted. Then, as uh, has been pointed out by earlier speakers, that there has been a blatant uh, denial of justice and social equity to the cookies. There is a blatant bias in favor of the majority community can be seen in all government decisions, particularly recruitments, as happened lately in the SSC, SSC recruitment, because they cancelled the, <coughs> the selection because there were too many cookies selected. I mean, this is the reason that they are giving blatantly. So is this acceptable in a democracy or in a constitutional uh, uh, setup? I don't think it's acceptable. Then comes the major gala event in the history of independent India. I did not, I have not seen such an event even in Kashmir, JNK, during long years of insurgency grand event was the Kangla event of 24th January, 24th January, ah. yeah. wherein all elected representatives, all legislators, all Mete MPs, 24th January, 24th, yeah. Yeah. were summoned to the Kangla fort in the presence of uh, Rajya Sabha MP, who is also the Maharaja of these Maitis, and also in the presence of one at least one union minister, Rajkumar Ranjan Singh, and all uh, other uh, elected MPs and MLAs from their community. Let me tell you, every elected representative, MLA or MP, is also a public servant. So every public servant who is elected was present there except the chief minister. There I have been told there were uh, representatives of the union government also there on in that event. Intelligence officials were there, central forces were there. That same day entire Imphal was taken over by Arambai Tengols. Heavily armed carders and militias were patrolling the streets of Imphal. Videos have been seen by everybody of that same day and all of them were gathered in the Kangla fort in the, and were administered an illegal and extra constitutional oath by the Arambai Tengol. Had it been any other uh, civilized country or any in any other state for that matter, if any organization is doing such an activity, they would have been hauled up, thrown into jail with UAPA and all those draconian uh, uh, 
those draconian laws would have been in, invoked against them but no such thing no action by the state or by the central government i have I, it has uh, it was told i mean it was reported that some of the mlas and mps were even rough, <coughs> roughed up physically manhandled whoever tried to resist the, this thing and the oath that was administered was of something like protecting the integrity of manipur see this is unconstitutional constitution of india provides for integrity of the union of india not for integrity of any state state integrity is a fallacy because states can be reor reorganized any time so many states have been reorganized uttarakhand reorganized from up jnk reorganized in 2019 most recent organized reorganized into two uts union territories uh telangana reorganized out of andhra pradesh chatisgarh reorganized out of madhya pradesh jharkhand reorganized out of mm, bihar haryana and punjab uh, haryana and himachal pradesh reorganized out of punjab so there is no such thing as state integrity so such an oath taking such an oath is unconstitutional is illegal and that too it was take it was oath was administered under duress it was forced upon them and this is a criminal offense so but no state action points out to state complicity then of course there is denial of guaranteed fundamental rights which uh, Silen Mang has already pointed out, so there is no need. People are getting bored also. So. <laughs> But one thing last, which I like to point out and which needs to be called out, because this is happening fully with state complicity and state connivance, is imposing of stigmas on Kukizo people. Stigmas like narco terrorists. illegal immigrants coolies etc etc sir recently monkeys monkeys also <laughs> so this is being done by the chief minister himself uh, long uh, long time back i saw his uh, facebook post or something wherein he was calling everybody illegal immigrant or something like that on twitter also he's, he was doing although he has stopped doing it now but he has done it and it does not make a difference whether he has stopped doing it or not his people are doing it every day on all over on social media all over in media also everywhere so all this has to be called out and registered because we have known for a long time what is itocha cartel who is running itocha cartel okay what is the involvement of methes in the drug in the drug trade Okay, it's nowhere in the world. I have seen the drug trade all around, all around the world. Nowhere in the world a particular community can have a stranglehold on 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 any trade, for that matter, drug trade or any kind of trafficking. It is regional. It is controlled by by regional people, not controlled by uh, by any community in particular. So there should be a concerted effort from from our side to. to call out although it has been pointed out by their own uh, police officers also that involvement of chief minister and his wife etc has been pointed out in the drug trade but this should be given more uh, i think more expose more exposure so that the stigma <coughs> does not stick to us although we don't nobody cares but it's their audacity which is going unchecked which has to be checked thank you very much Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Just one last question. You are talking about uh, alternative schooling for school-going children and uh, essential commodities. Uh, it's not being airdropped. Then all the discrimination uh, which you are talking about. So uh, and the uh, commandos in Morey. Sir, what according to you, or who, whom should we approach? or who should take this action and what according to you is for each and every of these uh, problems we should take the legal legal recourse legal recourse is approaching the courts 
where government is answerable. So far, government is not answerable anywhere. They are not answerable to anybody. Yes, sir. yes, yes, exactly. So there's, 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 uh, you cannot question the government. You don't have the access to the government. So you bring them to the court where they will be answerable. Once they are answerable, once courts only courts can hold them accountable. We are not in a position to hold them accountable. So we cannot even go there. Yes, sir. Okay. So every for each uh, such uh, dereliction of duty or abdication of duty by the government, it should be taken to court. Even recruitment is still going on in our election. Somebody should challenge it. Of, yes. uh, election court of conduct. Recruitment Some, is still going someone on. Someone should challenge it in the court. Thank you, sir. Yes. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Q&A session. Yeah, we will. Uh, yeah, we will be having another Q&A session. Okay. Let them sit and take water for a while, right? So thank you. Uh, I voted this for this. Before we move to the Q&A. I will not say quick questions and answers. It is questions and response, all right? Because that is, answers are always subject, subjective. Right? That is why I'll, I like to call it questions and response. So before we go with the Q&A, if I may ask Major Amit Bansar, sir, if you would like to comment on this press conference or any insights that you would like the audience to know, Please, you may take the podium. Meanwhile, audience, get ready with your Q&A after your presentation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Khangmilal. So, when we are talking about uh, this uh, academia side, or when we are talking about uh, the genocide, or when we are talking about the conflict, I have been telling from the day one that it did not start on 3rd of May 2023. It started many decades back, many decades back. I recollect uh, uh, in year 2003, I was sitting with the, the secretary of a village in uh, Manipur, uh, Molnoy to be precise in Tengnupar area. So I was speaking to him and I said, Ki, the way things are happening, you mark my words that I told in 2023, 21 years back that uh, this tribe is going to be annihilated by the people. If you don't uh, take care of it immediately, I had reasons to say that. What happened in uh, I am a student of history, so I keep uh, narrating the uh, quotes from the history. So what happened in the 10th century, 11th century, when the Islamic invaders came to India, what did they do first? They did not kill the people. They burned the libraries. They burned the educational institutions. They burned the spiritual centers. And as a result, they were able to enslave the entire community. What China is doing in Tibet now? China is burning the libraries. China is destroying the education institutions. <coughs> replicating those institutions with its own. And ultimately making people of Tibet slave. What happened in 1995, we all know in Manipur. The Manipur State Library was burnt. Uh, last year when this conflict started I was doing some research so in the National Archives I found some documents and I found a thesis of 19 which was written in 1962 it was only the digital copy was available and a lot of references were made in those thesis this references were about the history of Manipur this references were about the the way people have quoted about Manipur the way people have quoted about the hill tribes of Manipur which is of course killed uh, uh, Kuki and Zo tribes all those references were targeting or were indicating at the Manipur State Library, which was already burnt. So now we know why the library was burnt. So that there's no proof of history. Once there's no proof of history, whatever is being taught to them later on, they can teach anything to you. They can create any narrative to you. So that's what is happening now. Since 3rd of May, what we are listening? We are listening to the narratives only. Mathe narratives and other narratives being circulated in the media. And since we don't have any truth with us, most of the people outside the community or maybe the neutral people from the mainland India have no option but to believe on these narratives. So we have to be very very precise about it. I, I request each one of you must go read your history what you are, what you were. How long you have been living in those hills? Rather than believing on the narratives. And as far as the education is concerned, as far as your own system is concerned, we have to fight it out. Otherwise, there's no other option. 
we have to fight it out community has to come out ngos have to come out social people will have to come out so somehow it has to be done even if we have to get the students admission into some private universities here in north india i think we must go ahead with that rather than rather than sitting idle for that so time is to understand time is to uh, think about it and time is to so have a uh, organized fight we already lost too much in last 10 months thank you Oh, sorry. That was very insightful. And it's a call to all Ukijo community to stand together, step first, and continue to fight the injustice that is meted out to us. And hand in hand with those people, perhaps through through thick and thin, sympathize us because of uh, the truth that we stand for. We must continue to fight, and it is. I is pregnant that the civil society as well as student organizations and other uh, civil societies to come together hand in hand to fight together and like advocate uh, abhijit said we must always this visit always go to the court because court can only ensure justice for now that is the only source that we can log on to moving on to the q and a if there is anybody who would like to ask questions the time is open this anyone we expecting good questions <coughs> no doubt would you like to take the mic uh it's not a question but it's a response uh and then and then also a statement yeah uh i'm very happy to attend this press conference today because uh, my sons and my brothers and my fellow cookie brethren brought out very important issues you know like we all th- talk about genocide earlier we never we know that uh, acad- academy genocide <laughs> is happening i can't even pronounce <laughs> it uh, so uh, it's happening and then um, but now when we highlight it so uh, we know that uh, but we have to take action you know exactly our community has been very complacent so far we always right. we know what is happening to us we know what is uh, what is ha- what what to do but we never take action we are very slow in taking actions so like the cbc have de affiliated so many schools so why haven't we gone to cbc here the nute we should go that we have this uh, exactly. women's organization there we, we should go and visit personally we are based in delhi yes. we said we are going to be the voice for the void so why didn't we go now today it just came to my mind yes we should go to cbc and write an application and ask them why did they de- uh, you know why did these things happen to us so we can fight from our side like this a court is going on no? which was he said is under the court uh, it has been but still personally we can go and then uh, fight it out and visit them write application so we have to be very proactive i feel uh, I you know they have approached the court they have opposed the court yeah, also i'm not aware yeah that's why i said that uh, as you said that we have we cookie people When are very brave on the next day i had suggested that some somebody should go to court about this yeah because this is It, rightly or wrongly, <coughs> affiliation was given. Yeah. So now de-affiliating is playing with the future of the children. Right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So that, which course. is the which has to be a paramount interest, and there is a slew of uh, judgments available which have upheld the interest of the students above anything else. Yes. But I don't know. I mean, yeah. What is uh, stopping them from approaching the taking no, the no. right approach? No. Now this why I said we have to be proactive, especially. a women's group very yeah. semi yeah. yeah so uh, we, so what happened is that we have a women's group here in a two women's group one is unao and one is cookies a women's group and all so this can be our role <laughs> and uh, and then uh, cookie uh, student organization to for more i heard today you all are very smart very uh, articulate very uh, the sing intelligent uh, boys you know very intelligent we do not lack in uh, we do not lack behind the mates we sh- we should know that now as we, as you said we will rise again like a phoenix from uh, from the ashes cookie cookies are warriors we have very resilient nature so i think we should um, 
uh, we should fight together and then uh, now i know that the role the women have to play the women's role you know is so much we say we are the voice for the voiceless but we are not fighting for the world is saying exactly. so cbsc all is saying we should go and then proactively uh, take uh, uh, is into our hand and then fight with them so if we approach them because now we know that uh, the central government is not for us the, uh, the manipur government is not for us nobody is for us so we have to help ourselves isn't it yeah. we have to help ourselves and then we have very um, uh, uh, very good people like vishwaji then and major bansal who are from outside the community but fighting for our community and with the community and they've been hated they have been threatened they have been you know they have faced a lot of discrimination because of us so we have to unite together we have to work together we are not less than anybody else so if if the central government is not going to help us if the state government we have to help ourselves and then the role uh, today while listening i was just thinking oh my god we have so much uh, role to play as a as a new day you know we have so many thing to do and even the students uh, you all have such a important role to do so let's not talk only but let's execute it and let's go in implement it and then do work together in tandem you know students and mother they can always work together all the time you know we are all one body we are all fighting for one cause so that's why i feel that yes yes it is time now that nute and uh, the student union come together even the npes everybody should work together and be united so and then thank you very much i uh, you know you all gave a very good presentation and it was very nice to hear what you all were saying and it remind us again that we have to help ourselves nobody is going to help us so let's be proactive and then do what we have to do thank you very much Anybody would like to ask questions? What are you thinking? I know some of you are thinking. I'll still hang on for a while, but I'd like to comment on what uh, uh, Dr. Tara said. Thank you, Nu. That was a huge moral booster for student organization, Cookie Students Organization in particular. And I'm telling you, if the cookies were not for truth, Major Amit Bansal, Advocate Vizvazid will not be here in the first place. They're not fighting for the cookies per se. They're fighting for truth, for justice that has been perpetrated against vulnerable communities like cookie cookie community. Once again, thank you, sir. Anybody would like to come in? Can I? Sir, uh, any other department or commission? that we can approach uh, to file or this injustice no? meted out by state government like uh, RTI is there, no? any other department or commission uh, or court thank you Manipur High Court is there uh -huh. now you don't need to go to the bar to to <coughs> Approach the High Court. You can approach it online. Okay, so now access to High Court to every High Court in the country, and in fact, Supreme Court and every High Court in the country is now available online. So you should, uh, all of you should put uh, put off this uh, inhibition that we cannot approach the Impal High Court, the High Court, because it is an Impal. It can be done online. And your lawyers, or, uh, whoever is representing you, either you yourself, the petitioners themselves, can appear by video conference. We are doing it every day. So many cases. I uh, today sitting here in uh, in, uh, in Delhi. I am appearing in uh, other high courts of the country: Mumbai High Court, Chandigarh High Court, Bengal High Court. Now there is no big deal. So so just shed this uh, this. So we are that we cannot approach the high court. There is no need to approach. I think we are asking of government departments and commissions. Everywhere there will be a native sitting there, presiding over that department. Yeah. And you won't succeed there. And for high court, there is a judge from Delhi. Yeah. Okay, use them. Close door press conference because of the model code of conduct which was imposed by the 
uh, election commission because of the upcoming Lok Sabha general election 2024. Um, because this calls for a rally and a protest. In fact, this many people struggle with the with the uh, uh, pronunciation. It's academinocide, okay? Um, for Sasith Harul, it would have been easy, but for us, yes, it is difficult because this is, this is a new term. Um, well, I got the, defi the, 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 the definition from ChatGPT. So you are living in a world of ICT. Make use of every tool that is, you know, on, on the palm of your hand. If you type academinocyte, ChatGPT will tell you what it is. And in fact, if you read it, it is very apt to what the Kuki Joe people are suffering at the moment, actually. All right, I think I'll call Niam Vaani Kim, right? Nei Hoi Kim. Nei Ho Kim, Vai Pei, area representative Munir Ka to propose the vote of thanks. After this, ladies and gentlemen, we have refreshment served for all of us. Please join us. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay. A, a warm and grateful evening to everyone present here today, and I am. It's a privilege for me to propose a word of thanks and uh, address this uh, word of thanks, and then uh, t uh, take this opportunity to thank all the all people present here today. And firstly, I would I would like to thank Almighty for giving us this uh, opportunity to meet here and uh, to give put address to this topic, which is given here academic side. And I would like to first uh, thank all uh, thank the penalties uh, for today, especially or uh, firstly I would I would like to thank the the first panelist or he's our internal panelist uh mr apaljuhu guite who is the current K ex president of K ksodn and and uh, and then i would like to thank mr Salin monk hoki who is the current general secretary of ksodn and ncr for the coverage of their for their precise coverage on their topics, particular respective topics. And I would like to thank uh, Sir Chris Budget Sir for sparing his valuable time to be here with us as a panelist today. And Sir, you have you really inspired us and then the thing that you have you have, the like love and care that you have for this truth is really inspiring for us as well. And also I would like to thank uh, Dr. Diaz who is the uh, founding president of KW that I see, if I'm not wrong. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, being here despite being invited in the last minute. He was there on time and then uh, giving us such an inspiring words. Uh, and truly, sir, I really appreciate your effectiveness and efficiency and how can I forget our host or moderator for today, uh, Mr. Tong Milal Dongil, who is the vice president at MAID of Gasodian NCR currently. And of course, I'd like to thank the uh, media team and then a press from, from the OVC. Thank you so much for being here today. And our special invitees, thank you so much, sir, for your speech as well. And uh, ma'am, Dr. Tara, Thank you, Manching, for here. And last but not least, I would like to thank the executive member of KSOD and NCA for investing all, all the time and energy and heart and soul to make this event possible and successful. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, audience, for your patient listening. And thank you, the media and the cameraman, yeah, for the coverage. You may, we may be dismissed. Thank you.